Evaluate the given expressions. The first expression is inverse cosine of sine four-thirds pi radians. We begin by evaluating the innermost function, which in this case is sine four-thirds pi radians. To evaluate this using the unit circle, we begin by sketching four-thirds pi radians in standard position. The initial side is along the positive x-axis, and now we rotate counterclockwise four-thirds pi radians. We have one-third pi radians, two-thirds pi radians, three-thirds pi radians, and then finally four-thirds pi radians. This is the terminal side of four-thirds pi radians, which intersects the unit circle at this point. On the unit circle, x equals cosine theta and y equals sine theta, which indicates that sine four-thirds pi radians is equal to negative square root three divided by two, and therefore the expression simplifies to inverse cosine of negative square root three divided by two. Next, the output or range of inverse cosine is from zero to pi radians, including the endpoints, which means in standard position, the angle will be in this interval here, from zero to pi radians, including the endpoints. In order to evaluate inverse cosine of negative square root three divided by two, we need to find an angle in this interval that has a cosine function value of negative square root three divided by two, which means we look for the point on the unit circle in this interval where x is equal to negative square root three divided by two, which is this point here. This indicates the terminal side of the angle must be this ray. The initial side is along the positive x-axis, and therefore the angle in this interval that has a cosine function value of negative square root three divided by two is 150 degrees, or in radians, five-sixth pi radians. The expression simplifies to five-sixth pi radians. Next, we have inverse sine of tangent seven-fourths pi radians. We begin by evaluating tangent seven-fourths pi radians. Let's sketch the angle in standard position. The initial side is along the positive x-axis, and now we rotate seven-fourths pi radians counterclockwise. We have one-fourth pi, two-fourths pi, three-fourths pi, four-fourths pi, five-fourths pi, six-fourths pi, and finally, seven-fourths pi radians. Notice how the angle intersects the unit circle at this point. On the unit circle, tangent theta is equal to y divided by x. Notice how the x and y coordinates are opposites, and therefore, y divided by x is equal to negative one. The expression simplifies to inverse sine of negative one. Also remember, when dividing fractions with the same denominator, we can just find the quotient of the numerators. Notice if we do that for these two fractions, y divided by x would be negative square root two divided by square root two, which also gives us negative one. And now we evaluate inverse sine of negative one, where the output or range of inverse sine is from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, including the endpoints. Which means in standard position, the angle has to be in this interval from zero to pi over two radians, including pi over two radians, or in this interval from zero to negative pi over two radians, including negative pi over two radians. On the unit circle, sine theta is equal to y, so now we locate the point on the unit circle in this interval where the y coordinate is negative one, which is this point here. And therefore the terminal side is this ray, the initial side is this ray, but the angle is not 270 degrees or three halves pi radians because that is not in the range or output of the inverse sine function. We need to rotate clockwise and therefore the angle is going to be negative. The angle is negative 90 degrees or radians, negative pi over two radians or negative one half pi radians. So this is equal to negative one half pi radians. Next we have inverse sine of cosine, negative five sixth pi radians. We first evaluate cosine of negative five sixth pi radians. Because the angle is negative, we will rotate clockwise. Starting along the positive x-axis, we rotate clockwise five sixth pi radians. So we have negative one sixth pi, negative two sixth pi, negative three sixth pi, negative four six pi, and finally negative five six pi. This is the terminal side of negative five six pi radians. We are looking for the cosine function value which is equal to x, and therefore cosine negative five six pi radians is equal to negative square root three divided by two. 
the expression simplifies to inverse sine of negative square root three divided by two. And again, the output of the inverse sine function is from negative pi over two to positive pi over two radians, which means the angle is in this interval or this interval. So now we look for the point on the unit circle in this interval where the y coordinate is equal to negative square root three divided by two, which is this point here, which indicates the terminal side is this ray, the initial side is this ray, but again, to be in this interval, we have to rotate clockwise, and therefore the angle is going to be negative. The angle we are looking for is negative 60 degrees, or in radians, negative pi over three radians, or negative one third pi radians. The expression simplifies to negative one third pi radians. And finally, for the last example, we have inverse tangent of cosine negative three pi. We begin by sketching negative three pi radians in standard position. The initial side is here. And now we rotate clockwise three pi radians. So we have negative one pi radians, negative two pi radians, and negative three pi radians. This is the terminal side of negative three pi radians. We are looking for the cosine function value, which is equal to x. Cosine negative three pi radians is equal to negative one. The expression simplifies to inverse tangent of negative one. And now we evaluate this expression. The output of inverse tangent is from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, not including the endpoints, which means the angle will be in this interval from zero to pi over two radians, not including pi over two, or from zero to negative pi over two radians, not including negative pi over two radians. On the unit circle, tangent theta is equal to y divided by x, in order for y divided by x to be equal to negative one, the x and y coordinates must be opposites. So looking at the unit circle, notice how this is the point in the interval where the x and y coordinates are opposites, and therefore y divided by x is going to be equal to negative one. And therefore the terminal side of the angle we are looking for is this ray. The initial side is this ray, and to be in the interval, we have a clockwise rotation giving us negative 45 degrees, one radians, negative pi over four radians, or negative one fourth pi radians. I hope you found this helpful.